So how about competence centers? And yeah, the interesting part is when, when Sergi was giving the introduction, it was coming back to my mind that I always have a nice discussion. I talk about the competence centers, people have the centers of excellence in mind, and then we have very interesting discussions. So I'm talking now about the competence centers, but we'll show you later in how far they're really directly also aligned with the um, centers of excellence. So um, just, 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 if you, if you looked at the, the, the state of play in HPC so some, some, some time ago, it was like, and we were always complaining about this, we were never agreed that we did this, but we always uh, complained that the US had a, had a US HPC strategy, very clear, very focused, very governmental driven. Japan had the same, China had the same. In Europe, we had a diversity of single strategies of the, of the single countries and nations. Still, there was some alignment at the European level, um, but still there was not the European HPC strategy as a whole. Or if, let's say, if you ask several people, they, they could present you several European HPC strategies, which were partially their own. So um, with the Euro HPC joint um, undertaking, we had now a massive, massive game changer on the field, really bringing together all the different nations in Europe and trying to, to, to work towards the European HPC ecosystem, which includes everything around infrastructure, which we have very well represented by, by Prey, Cheon, and the, the other activities. With technologies, we have now the European Processor Initiative, with technology providers from the ETP for HPC, so um, we had the BDVA people, and we have also the applications field. If we look at the, the defenders of excellence, they're application driven, and Europe is very strong on applications. So by bringing this together within the, or under the Euro HPC umbrella, we've seen that on the European level, we have quite now this triangle which works well together and, and, and fosters really the, the, the existence, the manifestation of European HPC excellence, and also brings this uh, up to the, to the single, single nation. So the question you might ask, why do we then need competence centers? And uh, the answer is quite simple. Uh, still, if we look at the different nations, and coming back to what I said before, we had the different uh, on the national um, strategies. Obviously, there was also a different, let's say, on one hand, amount of money invested into these strategies, which is simply due to the nature of nations. The other thing is, let's say, in some countries, it was higher prioritized than other bits, depending, again, on the background of the countries. So we have in many, many European and associated nations, um, HPC, and when I talk about HPC, I also include the, the, the um, associated technologies like HPDA, AI, call it whatever you want, because I think we are in a time where you cannot see the one standalone anymore. And it's, in many countries, it's taken by academy, academia. In some countries, it's taken from public administration. In some countries, industry is really making heavy use of the available HPC technology. Now, if you look at the national program, it's different over here. Some nations, industry uses it, but they use it in-house, and no really uh, academic person is really getting hands on this until they move from academia to industry and working there. Um, in some, some countries, like for instance Germany, you have the, the industry working heavily together with, um, with, with, the, uh, with the academic partners, universities, or centers, same I think in Spain, same is in, 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 in UK. Um, so, so you see, there's already a, a difference. If you look at other countries, it's not so, so, so uh, mature there. And the idea was behind this. Okay, we're now working on the centers of excellence, on the applications. We are working on the technology part. But on the national level, how, how can we somehow bring together different approaches that, which are there? And even if we say probably some nations are less mature, they may have, let's say, mechanisms in place which others don't have in a probably de facto more mature uh, HPC using country. And so the question is how bring we bring people together? How can we do an exchange? How can we maximize synergies between the different uh, European states to further strengthen this European HPC ecosystem, ecosystem and to really under, underpin it with a certain layer of competence? So the idea was, um, and this is, um, Let's say the, the first, first, first uh, mindset was really, okay, we start with one competence center per Euro HPC participating state or EU member state. This, this, this uh, let's say, um, this sentence was very important because it showed the political aspect of this. 
not all the Euro HPC participating states were at the same time EU member states and the other way around, but we did not want to, let's say, exclude somebody, but want to be open for this. Um, this, this competence center should be a single point of entry for diverse things, technical experts, technical ex access to technical expertise, training and outreach, interaction and collaboration with other national competence centers, and on-demand services and tools. And this last interaction with other national competence centers is very important because what we said is still, we build up something in one nation, but it should not be isolated. It should be, let's say, able to interact with other national competence centers on, a, on the level. And it should, we should be able really to, to, to enable this, the sharing of existing bit, existing mechanisms. We have, let's say, some examples here, tools, codes, code snippets, whatever is possible, libraries. And by that, to, to make this like, a, let's say, a small part of a big, big activity in Europe. And obviously, um, the idea was also to, to, to ensure that the, the national competence that have access to European activities, where the national competence that are stakeholders, this could be centers of excellence, this could be some, something else in here. The thing is, we always discover is, when we talk about let's say competences we know best the competences of the of the pieces we are involved in so if i'm part of a center of excellence in engineering i will be able quickly to tell you ah there's the center of excellence in engineering but if somebody is not part of this they may not know even uh, be aware of what is going on there in the, that field and going further so we have to, to find these these synergies and have to to, to make the maximal use of that so in the european context Obviously, this was, let's say, now manifested in two projects. And there was a call for one call for a research and innovation action on the National Competence Center called EuroCC. Um, this is, let's say, in terms of, of project setup, very simple. It has a management work package and it has one work package per competence center. The other, the other bit is the coordination and support action to manifest the um the really let's say the the, the european level exchange programs etc um this is called castiel um this is a csa basically european csa uh, and both of these projects were recently or got a green light for funding and are now let's say in the progress of being set up in the system of the commission etc i will say something about this in, in some minutes so the euro cc as i said it somehow we needed an instrument to set up the single national competence centers, minimal investors, which means it's not like there is one management which tells all the people on the national level in detail what they should do. So there's not a technical management with regard to this, but there's some, some entity which has to overlook, let's say, what's going on there. Are they making progress? Um, are they going forward? And let's say, do they need help for, for anything in that regard? So. Um, it was decided that the setup of each national competence center work package, and we are now talking about the, let's say, how is it put in a, in a, in a framework. Um, each national competence center had key activities identified, and we looked at, let's say, what is common here, and put this um, in, in, uh, as, as certain tasks in the, in the work plan for the next two years for these national competence centers. Um, which was then defined in the preparation of the, of the whole world concept. And these, these commonalities was one thing which is common for everybody is training and skills development. Still here, we have countries which are much further in, evolved and have a, have a clear and, and huge training program. We have some which, which need a training program, which don't have the time probably to really invest maximum amount of money in this, but which would be very helpful for them when they identify other competence centers where they could exchange with people and get that they learn how to set up this probably on their side on one hand, but already start to operate a training program with the help of others. Technology transfer, business development, industrial collaboration, how do I interact with industry? It's always easy to, 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 to uh, think about, I put a machine here and then industry wants to take it, but there's much, much more behind this. It starts from the security aspect, it starts from the operation model, it starts from, am I really prepared to do this in terms of staffing? Do I have the right people in here? 
Do I talk directly with the NSA? So these are the things which, which have to be exchanged on that level. So on one hand, the people which want to set this up are aware of what's, let's say, in front of them. On the other hand, that the people which, which already do this can, can provide their, their, their knowledge here. Competence mapping is very important and very interesting because in, in each nation, somebody knows something about the nation setup, but there's not really a big picture where you say, this is completely our competence map and we have the competence map here for don't know, AI, we have competences here for HPC. So everybody has a piece of the, of the whole jigsaw, but not the whole, whole, whole picture here. So one, one important activity for national competence center will, will surely be to set up this, this competence map, which is like a living document. So if somebody new in the, in the nation comes there and, and has some, some expertise, you put them in there, it's like a, yeah, call it, we sometimes call it a yellow pages approach, which is like you really understand who can provide you certain competences. And going back to industrial cooperation, this would be very important because it's even on a, on, a, on a local level in the nation, people want to cooperate, especially small and medium enterprises, they want to cooperate with somebody who's close to them. Ideally, they go into a center and have a look at the racks themselves and know the people behind this before, let's say, the small and medium enterprises really give you their data or want to work together with you. So that's very important here. Then we do some sort of a facilitation of access to scientific and technical expertise, knowledge pools. Also here, bringing things together. Where is it? How can we get it? How can we get access to, to this, this, this expertise? Also on universities, etc. And then awareness creation. Make people aware in your nation about the HPC. Make success stories. Make people, again, I, I know how it is in Germany and I expect it's the same for other countries. It's no more the times that the, the government just put a lot of money into this and people say, oh, yeah, it's good, good, we put a lot of money. I have no clue what HPC is, but it's good that they put a lot of, lot of money. And in these times, it will be even worse after this whole crisis because people will see in the newspaper, government gives center X 100 million euros for a new building and system or something like this. This is something we have to, to defend somehow. And this, uh, defend doesn't mean, let's say, that we're doing something nasty. But we will be able, we need to be able to give the politicians then the ammunition that they can say, look, these guys are doing this for us, for the society, for the industry, et cetera. And this is like a, this is what you get out of the money in here. We can't be, let's say, like the magic black box where there's something happening behind closed doors and, and nobody really knows what's going in there besides a lot of money. So as I said, we do a two project approach here. There's a logical distinction between national activities and the European uh, level coordination. Um, they are strong connected. So when you look, look at the, the picture here, you see already a first glance of the, the, the CSA. And you see that the CSA has here activities which map, map very good to the single, single sub topics or tasks of the, of the, of the, work, of the work packages or the national competence centers themselves. So this is really uh, very important to, to, to have this alignment here. If not, we would not be able to, to, to work this whole this out properly. So the EUCC, as I said, just received the green light for, for, for setting up the grant agreement. The potential start will be um, Q3 2020. This is something we will ha have to discuss further with the consortium. The problem is simply we need to do a workshop within two months after the start of the project. We have to organize the whole thing. So we are currently in discussing with the joint undertaking when it should be. I try to do this as, as soon as possible, um, but it needs to be feasible to really start this or kick this off properly. If not, then the whole activity will be, be an issue. And if you take a look at this, we're currently in this, this, this research innovation, 34 main participants and 31 nations. So we will have 31 work packages each on one national competence center. And this management will be not so trivial to achieve, but still manageable. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a budget per national competence center, which was up to 2 million euro, up to because uh, some countries decided to put in less, some countries even decided to put in more, and it's a 50-50 funding. So 50% is coming from the joint undertaking, 50% is coming from the member state itself. Um, I think the current, current number was something like in total it was like 28 million for the for the for the for the for the uh, different national competence centers. Many have uh, have taken the 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 what the, the two million 
some less, but this is okay for the point in time because some of them, as I said, the same way the maturity differs, the same way the available money differs. And that's why, why it's very important to use or maximize the synergies for them. And this is the structure, as I said, each, each um, of the, the common things maps to a task here. So, and this is, let's say, what we, what we, 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 we try to sketch this in a way how it should work on here. So if you look at this, so if the national competence and the, somehow you have a, have a base group of people working on this. These are the partners, the, the members in the consortium. Um, normally we have one main member and then a lot of third, third parties linked to this. But as we want to involve everybody somehow on the national level, so there's also a link to the national different activities, people which give training, which have resource providers, ISVs. So they will be on a national level taken into account by the nations organizing workshops with their, their, their stakeholders, with their, let's say, the respective people from, from, from their nation working on these bits in here. And the idea is really that science, industry, society, and politics benefit from the whole thing which is set up here and has the the national competence and there's a single reference point to address when there's some issues, some, some interest to do something with HPC. And here in, in, the, in, the, in the, the competence mapping, uh, let's say in, in, the, in, the, in the, the, the graph below, you still see again the competences and we have to bring in here the services for the people. So people should be able to come in and get something out of that. So the CSA, Coordination Support Action, Castiel, this is uh, also for the moment, both, both projects are 24 months, months as a starting phase. Um, depending on the success, there could be a continuation afterwards, but, but still, first of all, we have to, to do the thing right now. <laughs> um, so it should support really the, the, the national competence as by additional training, as enhancing the business development, the boosting the information exchange, doing training, mentoring programs, etc. And here the idea is to, to make this via specialized working groups. So the idea is here, and there was a, let's say, a lot of discussion in the, in the preparation, because if you have, let's say, 31 nations, everybody wants to participate, of, of course, in the coordination support action. But we decided to have here really a core team of some partners, which bring together and set up the frame for the whole thing and have that say the whole whole activities with working groups where then all the nations can send in their stakeholders so that they have a say in that. But still it needs to be led by somebody, let's say here. And you don't want to have let's say people which have led a, as a work um, a project before know that it would be a nightmare to have let's say really a working group of thirty one people which all at the same time want to 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 push their things forward. So you need some some management structure and then you, you bring in the, or open the floor for the people to bring in their expertise and to bring in the bits. So also these working groups should work on base of the, of the documentation, for instance, which is produced in the, in the, in the national competence centers, like the competence map and the different things. They should be the input for this working group. So not let's say like the working group discuss something and the nations do something different here and in the end you have to try to find out how to bring things together. But it's simply important, again, the alignment here. To, to, to ensure that. So these are the six partners which are setting up Cassiel. It's the Gauss Center for Supercomputing, High Performance Computing Center of Stuttgart, Barcelona Supercomputing Center, Gineca, Praise, Teratic. Um, the two German partners are obviously, uh, uh, let's say, a show, let's say, or a, a presentation of the un unfair domination of the German partners which simply comes from the discussion that Gauss as a German umbrella organization for the three centers should do this, but at, at HLS, High Performance Computing Center, we will do the project management with our project management group. So it's not the evil takeover of Germany, it's simply, um, it was designed that way. The budget of this uh, CSA is around 2 million euros. So obviously everybody was happy to get 2 million euros. I had to disappoint everybody because we have put, I think, around half of the money just aside to organize all these working groups here, to organize meetings, to pay the travels, to ensure that people can probably, uh, probably do their job, especially also if a country doesn't have that much budget in the national competence and uh, um, it's most likely that it will have issues to travel to certain working group meetings if we don't do them virtually. And sometimes you will need face-to-face -face meetings. 
So at the end, here's also the idea of really supporting those people and supporting exchange of people and supporting really the, the bit here. It's not about, let's say, getting rich with this. It's really about setting the frame for this and supporting the interested participants to maximize the bid and not being, let's say, obliged by a lower budget because of the, the, the economic um, situation in the country and, and, and not to take them out of that. Good. This is the first part which I already said. Um, at the CSA, we will simply do the organizational level. Um, a lot of NCSEs, the National Conference Centers, I think they were already happy that there's a CSA doing their work, so we had to disappoint them. No, they have to do their work themselves, <laughs> which is probably also better for them. And um, the idea is really here to bring people together. Um, this is more or less, I said, several of these bits here, networking activities, travel support, administrative work, yes, best use of local champions. There will be also a guide, um, guiding instrument, uh, like, a, like, a, like a governing board, which will have, let's say, selected representatives of the 31 um, national competence centers. Also here, if you have a governing board with 31 partners, you will not come to an agreement that easily. So the idea is that we will elect two or three representatives, which then have, have a say in the, in the governing board together with the management of the project. So we have, let's say, some control, but a control which is itself controllable. Um, this, there should be an exchange platform in Castiel. And yeah, I'm careful because whenever somebody says to the word portal or something like this, people start jump up and say, we have already a lot of things in Europe, which is simply true. Um, we will do, let's say, a minimal, minimal setup of necessary um, exchange platforms, exchange mechanisms like the like one mailing list, fora, etc. Um, we will do the networking event, which is okay, and there should be a competence and exchange portal, which will not be the handy fancy tool for eight million developers or something like this, but it should be something which is then driven really by the competence centers and where they have, let's say, the possibility to share different uh, things they want to share, um, how they get, let's say they, they can give limited access to data, codes to other centers, et cetera. And also let's say that we can represent on this portal this competence mapping then as a European competence map here. Here we have to say, we have to see in how far we can, can interact. I know that Praise was announcing something the last days on, on having something like a, like a portal or let's say like an like a overview. Um, I don't want to duplicate the work here and praise is part, partner in this project, so it wouldn't make sense to, to, to do it again. So we have to see in how, to, how far we can interlink with these bits here. Um, that's why we also renamed it as not as portal, but rather a gate. Yeah. So uh, it's called the Gaskatiel gate, where we have this competence map, where we have the, the, the national and European activities with this ex proxy to expertise, solutions, etc. again. Not in the in the the way fully automated everything like this because this is not the intention of this, but really let's say if somebody comes to this that they will find their way at a certain point in time and with the, the the right context to address on the national levels, and 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 be being able to to further further work on. So and if you look at the um, the European context itself, um, this is a picture which 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 I was starting to draw, uh, I think, one and a half years ago when, when we tried to get, a, get an overview of what's going on in Europe and, and on national level. And now we were able to embed here Cascade and Euro CC that you say it's somehow more visible what is where. And what we see is on the European level, there's a, currently a lot of ongoing with the European PETA and pre access case system and later the access case system, European access case development with the Fed HPC programs, with the Euro HPC program. We have technology platforms. We have, let's say, HPC Gig as a CSA. We have the, the European Centers of Excellence, um, XDCI, Focus, COE, Praise, the SME instrument, which will be funded. Sorry. And um, on the national level, you have here, let's say, the national resource providers, national providers, national research, national training. So what we try to, 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 to implement here is Castiel and, and, and EuroCC as somehow like a, like a, like a, yeah, a layer through which you can go, you're not obliged to go. And surely, again, before now people start getting getting nervous, nobody plans that Castiel will take over, let's say, the leadership of all of these bits above, but it should be able to give people which are interested 
let's say some information and some some path towards the single activities to make them aware of what's going on there and which is the best activity to fit for me also here. And the EuroCC is the same on a national level. So the conclusions, quite simple. I think we have the mechanisms here in place uh, to support and integrate evolution of national European HPC. Uh, we all know that the mission will be challenging, but I think it's worth it because uh, from, from, from our viewpoint, I think we could cause here a sustainable impact for the European HPC evolution in the Europe itself by providing access to a tool which is no more such just, just as I say, like a nice technology to be elaborated, but which is used in several countries very successfully. And I think it's time to, to really ensure that this is also, let's say, growing in the whole European area so that there's, there's availability for the industries there. Industries will need this now after the crisis, ideally to, to, to be supported as much as possible. The research will need this as much as possible. We see this now with all the COVID activities, etc. And where, where people try on a single single activity to make 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 support for the one or other researchers, one or other company which uses it, and I think think it's very important to set this up and to not only to work on a European technology strategy and a European application strategy, but also to push the competences forward. Because in the worst case scenario, we have a very intelligent technology, we have very intelligent applications, but we don't have really the the people there. To be able to 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 let's say make the best out of this and to still evolve that and that's it thank you very much